well. There's a woman named Laurie Grobman, G-R-O-B-M-A-N, and she says that one of the fundamental things that we need to do is shift undergraduate education. In particular, undergraduate research and education. You're in this 1302 class because it's the research half of first year writing, right? You are under no illusion that you'll, at some point you're doing research. You're writing a research paper. What Lori Groman wants you to do is to not think of it as you trying to write an assignment to please that professor, to do exactly what they're saying. Instead, she says that you need to be doing research along a continuum of novice to expert, right? So it's not that teachers are above you, experts are above novices, but that we're left to write. And that at any, any given point, you and I can move back and forth along this novice to expert continuum. Where do you think I belong as a member of the Valley, a citizen of the Valley? Based on my experience, I've lived here three years. This is my, I'm in my fourth year. Where am I? Headphones on the right. Where do I belong? I'll start here. Tell me when to stop. Which way should I go? I think he's probably right. How long have you been in the Valley? Your seventh year. Oh, so you're like, you're just like right here. Who can beat him? <coughs> Striped sweater. 19 years. Oh, yeah. Anybody beat 19 years? Pink. Oh, well, that's not very much. Anybody beat 20? 24. Now we're getting somewhere. Based on your experience at any given situation, you may move back and forth. I was a student. I was a student for 10 years. By the time I finished my PhD, I was an expert student. But guess what? I haven't been in college in 10 years. I'm no longer an expert at being a student. I'm in many ways back to being a novice because I've been teaching for so long that I can't often remember what it's like to be in the student's shoes, right? To have those pressures. You guys are experts in that. Education. I'm probably, I'm not the expert in writing because she has more experience than I do and he has more experience than I do. But we're all kind of grouped on this end because this is what we've trained to do, to be experts in writing. But if we add experts in student writing or experts in college writing, guess what? Your experience may trump my education. So what Grove is trying to do is to plant this idea that at any given moment, your experience, your education, and your experiences can move you back and forth. And she's just trying to get you guys to think about this experience as a chance to move forward, to gain some expert students. <coughs> so if you're supposed to be on this novice to expert continuum, why should you do it? Besides, I said so. Because I said so is never a good reason, right? There was this really interesting study by Nancy Summers and Laura Salt at, the, at Harvard. And they followed 400 students over their undergraduate careers. And what they were trying to do was to figure out what role writing played in helping these students transition from high school to college, right? Like what happened to them in terms of their experiences with writing to help them get into college? One of the interesting things they learned, and I know you're going to be shocked because you probably don't believe this, is the students found pride in, the, in their accomplishments, right? So at the end of the semester when they would do interviews with Summers and Salts, they would bring in the writing that they had done. And they would, they would bring in like a 25-page research paper and a 15-page research paper and a 10-page research paper. And they would say, look what I did. Like, this is who I've become as a student, right? This is all I know. When I began this semester, I didn't know anything. But I have evidence now, right? I learned something. I did something this semester. They also found that writing in their classes helped them avoid what one of the students called academic tourism. And I love that phrase. They actually said that they preferred classes where they had to write. Because in the classes where they were writing, they weren't just surveying the landscape, right? They weren't taking the Rick Steves version tour of astronomy or physics. But instead, they were in it. They were part of it, right? When they were writing, it wasn't that they were excited about the writing itself, right? How many of you love to write? especially for your classes, right? I get up every morning to write for you guys. I love it, it's fun. But what they were excited about wasn't necessarily the writing activities, but it was that they could belong, right? That's one of the things that we'll talk about, that novices belong to something. The students 
a struggle, though, because when you start to write, you often have that experience of, I don't know what the heck I'm doing, right? French, advanced French grammar. Wow, I was lost. I got a D in that class. I got a mercy B. I still don't know how. There must have been a heck of a curve on the final exam. Because I worked my butt off and earned a D. I know it. I didn't know much. I was no expert. I didn't have any authority in that class. But Summers and Salt said that it doesn't matter, that you still need to see yourself in a world that demands something more and deeper than what you've been doing, right? You need to believe that being in college, doing college research is more than what you did in high school, <coughs> right? It also means that we need to treat you as scholars in process, giving you real intellectual tasks that bring you into the conversation and that intersect with your interest. But we have to work together, right? Me seeing you as a scholar in process only works if you believe you're a scholar in process. You need to develop an open attitude to instruction and feedback, a willingness to experiment, and the faith that these new expectations can actually be met. There's this really interesting woman at the University of Central Florida, and she was studying how students felt in their research class. Now, her students were in a class pretty similar to mine. The students were doing really crazy reading. It was hard. It was difficult. It was asking them to kind of be responsible in ways they didn't, they didn't know how to do before. And what she found is that there was this dip. So imagine a great big U. And at the beginning of the semester, the students came in. They had been successful in their previous writing classes. They had done well in their AP exams. They were ready to go. But about two weeks into the semester, they tanked because they were overwhelmed. And suddenly, these new intellectual tasks, didn't, they didn't feel like they could do them and they didn't feel like they wanted to do them. Their self-efficacy had bottomed out. But what happened is as the students persevered, as they challenged, as they found new ways to do old things, new ways to read, new ways to write, new ways to think of the purpose of writing in academia, they started to climb back up because they had faith that they could do those assignments, right? Because they were open to learning new things. It seems strange to expect you to learn new ways to read and write now that you're in college. But in many ways, that's what we're asking you to do. I have a quote that I love. Students who continue to see writing as a matter of mechanics or as a series of isolated <coughs> exercises tend to never see the ways writing can serve them as a medium in which to explore their own interests. Students who refuse to be novices, who continue to rely on their high school methods and see writing as a mere assignment often end up writing versions of the same paper again and again, no matter how different their assignments. What do you think about all this? Do you think Flora, Salt, and Nancy Summers are right? Or are they just writing it to write it so that they can get published and get tenure and keep their jobs? That's why we do research, right? If I want to keep my job, I have to say something new and shiny. You said this, but my way said this. What do you think? Baseball cap. It's true. It's true? What's true? What I'm saying. You write the same paper over and over. Oh, it is true that you write the same paper over and over? Can you give us an example? Are you willing to give us an example, I should say? I can't think of one. You can't think of one? Can anybody? Can you think of a time when you realized, now that you think about it, you're like, I have been writing the same kind of paper over and over again. That's what I thought I was supposed to do. Well, like once you find success of like one paper, you tend to repeat it to try to get the same effect. Absolutely you do, right? Because everything depends on it, right? Yeah, it worked. And then it works again, and it works again. So Pavlov's dog says, why would you do something different, right? If every time I ring the bell, I get a treat, I'm going to keep ringing the bell as long as the treats keep coming, right? Well, what else? What about this, what else about this idea about like being open to new things and being a novice? What do you think about that idea?
hang out with penguins and study ice. So I would just go to class because he was interesting. That was the only thing that got me through that class. But I found something that I could do, right? I found a new way to learn, which was to actually listen to him because I never had to read a book. But if you're supposed to be novices, right, convincing you to do it isn't the same as helping you think about how to do it, right? Like Laura Summers and uh, Nancy Summers and Laura Salter were right. There, there's something interesting that we learn when we ask students after four years of writing what mattered to you, right? And it's the same things that you guys just said, being interested in it, knowing that it was doing something more than getting me a grade. Feeling like my contribution mattered, like I could contribute. That you weren't just cracking open my head, pouring some information in so that I could spit it out. 